Well, hello and welcome to Reformed Theology from a Recliner. I'm David Zavadil. I'm the pastor of Eastminster Presbyterian Church in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Today, I want to take a few minutes to begin discussing the five points of Calvinism. While I stated in my previous videos that these points are not the totality of the Reformed faith, they are important to our understanding of the Reformed faith. So today, we'll look at the first point, point commonly known as total depravity. In Romans 3.23, we read that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The issue uh, uh, of disagreement between the various theological views is the depth of this sin and its effect on man. We all agree that, that man sinned and has fallen short of God's glory. The, the question is, how deep is that sin? Where does it reside? How are we there? In other words, Few deny that man is sinner. The disagreement is, is he polluted, as the Arminians would say, or is it our nature, as Calvinism would say? Let me take a, um, a few moments to try to define total depravity a little bit. When we read the Westminster Confession of Faith, in section 6, paragraphs 2, 3, and 4, we find these, these comments in reference to the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden. Beginning in section 2, we read, By this sin, they fell from their original righteousness and communion with God, and so became dead in sin and wholly defiled in all the parts and faculties of soul and body. They, were, they being the root of all mankind, the guilt of this sin was imputed, and the same death and sin and corrupted nature conveyed to all their posterity descending from them by ordinary generation. From this original corruption, whereby we are utterly indisposed, disabled, and made opposite to all good, and wholly inclined to all evil, do proceed all actual transgressions. It speaks to our nature. The, the CARM.org website in their dictionary of terms defines total depravity this way. They write, Total depravity is the doctrine that fallen man is completely touched by sin, and that he is completely a sinner. He is not as bad as he could be, but in all areas of his being, body, soul, spirit, mind, emotions, etc., he is touched by sin. In that sense, he is totally depraved. Because man is depraved, nothing good can come out of him. Romans 3, 10 through 12. And God must account the righteousness of Christ to him. This righteousness is obtainable only through faith in Christ, and what he did on the cross. So what does this mean for man? Well, it does not mean that man is as wicked as he can possibly be. He is not utterly depraved, with every aspect of his being irredeemable, but instead he's totally depraved. It speaks to the nature, to the condition of man. If man is simply polluted by sin, he can clean himself up and be rid of that pollution. If polluted as, as some think, it would be possible to be and to live sin-free. Total depravity, though, teaches us that man's nature is depraved such that left to himself, he cannot and will not do anything to glorify God, but will seek to satisfy himself. The nature of man is such that he cannot do any glorifying righteousness of his own strength. He may be able to do a good act in the eyes of others, like taking care of his pets or loving his parents, but is unable in his own strength to act righteously in God's eyes. In Romans 8, 7, we read, Because the mind is set on the flesh, the, because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. In Psalm 51, 5, we read, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Sin is the inherited nature of man and is in need of redemption because man is unable to redeem himself. As R.C. Sproul used to say, we are not sinners because we sin. We sin because we are sinners. <clears throat> it is the condition, it is the nature in which we live from day to day. The Synod of Dort began this point in its response to the remonstrance because all five of the points stand or fall on this point. If man is not totally depraved, then none of the following four points are valid. 
But if man is totally depraved, as I believe he is, then all of the following, following points of the five points are necessary to the salvation of man. Now, today's brief discussion was not meant to be an exhaustive look at this doctrine, but a primer to whet your interest. There are many, many, many resources uh, to discuss this, and you could certainly message me uh, or, or leave a comment below, and I can refer you to uh, many good resources to look at this further. Join me next time as we look at the next point in the five points of Calvinism, unconditional election. Until I see, until then, I will see you next time on Reformed Theology from a Recliner.